Episode 8 Legitimate Businessman Gotham City Radio News Good evening, and thank you for tuning in to Gotham Radio News. I'm Vicki Vale. Tonight's top story is the attack that took place last night at the opening of the Iceberg Lounge nightclub. Longtime mob boss and alleged drug trafficker Black Mask launched an attack on the building. Numerous reporters, celebrities, and officials were in attendance for the grand opening. Among the illustrious lists of guests were Gotham's very own Bruce Wayne and Oswald Cobblepot. Sources report that an explosion just after midnight rocked the building, sending debris and smoke into the room. Armed men stormed the building, demanding money from the patrons and from the owner of the establishment, Mr. Cobblepot. We now go to a special guest this evening, the owner of the nightclub himself, Mr. Oswald C. Cobblepot. Well, thank you for having me on your show, Miss Vale. Mr. Cobblepot, can you describe the events of last night? Of course. But first, let me just offer my deepest condolences. The wonderful guests who were in attendance. Words cannot describe the horror and culpability I feel for the maleficence that occurred. Such deplorable events should happen to no one. And I am truly sorry for being the reason they occurred in the first place. I want to extend my deepest apologies to you as well, Miss Vale. Oh, I... Now, I don't want to waste your valuable airtime, Miss Vale. I believe you asked me to describe last night's events. It was pure, unadulterated chaos. The madman with guns burst through the wall and began to verbally and physically accost my guests. Then that barking fiend Black Mask emerged. It was like a demon dressed in white had ascended to this world. It was possibly the most terrifying experience I had ever felt when he approached and threatened my life. Early reports indicate that the criminal Batman also played a role in last night's attack. You are quite correct, Miss Vale. The Batman did make an appearance, but he antagonized that skull-faced villain why, if it weren't for the speedy arrival of the Gotham City Police Department and your quick thinking, Miss Vale, I do believe we would have all been slaughtered. Thank you, Mr. Cobblepot. At this time, is there anything else you wish to say to your attackers? I have already said all that I ever care to say to that vile fiend, but I do have a few words I would share with the other crime lords in Gotham. We people of Gotham are made of sterner metal. You don't just walk over the good people who have worked so hard to survive. I promise to do all in my power to make sure that there is a change brought to the city. That criminal masterminds like the Black Mask, will no longer have control. This city deserves better than that fiend, and I will deliver on that promise. Once again, thank you, Mr. Cobblepot, for taking time out of your schedule to talk with us. Why, thank you, Miss Vale. In other news, Mayor Hill has commissioned an investigative force to determine the viability state resources play in treating troubled and dangerous patients. This comes in the wake of the internal collapse of Arkham Asylum five months ago. The facility at that time was run by Dr. Jonathan Crane. Crane released countless inmates, including maximum security individuals such as Victor Freeze, Wayland Killer Croc Jones, The Joker, and Harleen Quinzel. Leading the investigative force will be Dr. Hugo Strange, renowned psychologist and acclaimed author. The findings of the report will be made public later this year. Coming up next, a string of fires throughout the city have the police wondering if a serial arsonist is on the loose. Inside one of the many recently burned buildings, I kneel and sift through the dark burned bits, looking for any evidence of who committed the crime. Just like the others. I don't understand, sir. Nothing at all. Hang on. 
What is it? A piece of glass. There's some sort of chemical residue left over. I'll have to bring it back to the lab. Sir, what was that noise? There are seven men coming. I hide in the shadows. The Firefly score really did a number on this place. You can gawk at the work of a professional later. We have our own job to do. Sorry. You three, start cleaning up the other rooms. Go it. The rest of us will start unloading the weapons and product. Drugs and weapons. You have to stop them, sir. I can't. There are too many of them. But they cannot be allowed to continue. Even if I could, they would just come back later with more men. All I can do now is get reconnaissance photos. Very well, sir. Whose men are they? Penguin emblems on all their shoulders. This mystery criminal is proving to be quite a nuisance. These men are more efficient than any of the other gangs I've seen. How is it possible that the Penguin was able to amass such a large group of individuals in such a short amount of time? I'm not sure. I should have known about him sooner. Sloppy! You must blame yourself. You're only one man. I can't let this city down. Hold on, hold on, sir. Alfred, what is it? It seems there's a press conference being held outside the district attorney's office. Mr. Dent himself is preparing to speak. Patch it through to the cow. Already in progress. We should be getting the signal any second now. Outside the district attorney's office. Rain pelts the umbrellas of the officials and reporters as Harvey Dent begins his speech. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for coming out tonight in this weather on such a frightful night. Mr. Dent, what is the DA and the police department doing to stop the gangs that are plaguing the streets of Gotham? All in good time, all in good time. I'll answer your questions after I make my announcement. I just need a few minutes. Thank you. Now, in the last few months, it has become very clear that crime is a rampant and escalating matter in this town. Why things are being taken to a new unsettling level. In addition, no one can ignore that the vigilante known as Batman has been unable to do anything to mitigate the situation. In the past, the priority has always been to handle the criminals at large and allow the Batman to lessen some of the pressure. As of today, the mayor, the police department, and the DA's office are all making it official our number one priority is to take down every single criminal. This includes gang members, crime lords, and vigilantes. In light of this new stance, the police department is launching a two-front assault. On one side, we will be targeting the Penguin Criminal Organization and all other gangs. And on the other side, we will be hunting down the Batman. It is my personal promise to keep these streets of Gotham safe. Now for questions. You, from the Gotham Radio News. Vicki Vale, question. Does this mean that you are officially admitting to working with the Batman in the past? And if so, to what extent was he involved with police business? I don't recall saying that. I believe what I said was that the police had taken the view that other matters were more pressing than hunting down the Batman. Why the sudden change in stance? Why, it's in no small part thanks to you, ma'am. I think we can safely say that you helped us all to see the Batman for what he really was. Next question. You, sir. In the glasses. I don't recognize your logo. Daily Planet, Gotham Division. What gang specifically are you targeting? 
Our primary interests are the Black Mask Operation, the Moroni Mob, Fawn's Gang, and the Penguin Outfit. Chronicle! Shouldn't the Penguin Outfit be the top priority given the fact that it's the newest in town? It's a complex matter. The Penguin Outfit has made a considerable mark in Gotham in such a short time. We want to be very careful moving forward. A lot of moving pieces in this plan. It sounds like you suspect there is more going on than you're telling us. I do believe you'd figured out the game we're playing. I tell you a snippet of information and it's all your job to try to get me to say more than I'm officially allowed to. That wasn't a denial. What's the police department up to? <laughs> You're free to ask Jim Golden that question. Any other questions? And how do you plan to persecute the Batman when he's done so much good for the city already? I think you're forgetting how the law works. You can be a model citizen for your entire life. But once you cross the line, all bets are off. In the Batman's case, I think it's obvious he crossed that line a long, long time ago. I believe I have time for one more question. Uh, yes, you. And what is the timetable for this initiative? This plan has already been in motion for the last month or so. We wanted to formally make a statement now that we are confident in the plan we have in place. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I uh, thank you and say good night. The Burnt Out Building the men have staked out a large area to house numerous guns and drugs. They're now guarding it as the last pieces of equipment are set up. I continue to hide. Oh dear. It appears that you are now public enemy number one. <laughs> At least I'm number one. Oh, so good to see you've managed to find a silver lining in this manhunt. The men here are almost finished setting up. I need to check the other buildings that have been burnt recently. Well, so much for a quiet evening. Tried it. Too boring. The Bat Cave. I sit with my cowl removed, analyzing the piece of glass I found. Were you able to find anything? The chemicals and accelerant. A large number of metal oxides, aluminum, magnesium, and zinc give it away. I've also been able to identify the silicon and boron in it. This makes me think it's a liquid derivative of thermite. Of course, the same conclusion that I would have come to. This isn't some guys dousing the building in gas and lighting a match. This was calculated and precise. I looked at all 13 buildings. They were all still intact structurally. And what exactly does that mean? Whoever did this wanted to make it seem like the buildings were destroyed. Make it seem too dangerous for anyone to go in. City officials would condemn the building. But what about the unlucky souls living on the street? Surely a condemned building seems better than no roof at all. The Penguin's men have taken care of that too. They marked the nearby area with all the different gang signs. None of the homeless dare go near the buildings, and the police don't have a clue. It seems that these criminals have a well-established method of operating. It gets worse. At first, I thought these buildings were merely used to store the weapons and drugs. But they also serve as distribution centers. Buyers come in with empty trash bags, as if they're cleaning up the area. They leave with full bags, containing the worst kind of trash. Unfortunately, it appears that they have, as the old saying goes, all the angles covered. How do you plan to stop them? Perhaps you should look to Miss Gordon or Master Grayson for aid. Surely with the three of you, you could put a serious dent in their operations. Barbara and Richard are off in Bloodhaven. They're tracking down the Riddler. Besides, even if all the buildings were taken down, they could just start the scheme all over again. It would be a never-ending process. 
We need a better plan of attack. A plan that you've no doubt already concocted. Of course. Please, don't hesitate to tell me. The suspense is killing me. Very funny. When I visited each of the sites, I placed false ammunition rounds in the storerooms. The bullets have radio signal emitters in them. I can trace the rounds as they move. Eventually, they have to go back to the main area of operations. If I find that, I can disrupt the activities across the entire city. That would take a great deal of time, sir. Do you think it's wise to wait so long? It's the best course of action. I won't act blindly. Do you ever wonder if you have any effect? It occurs to me that it would be easy to be convinced by the media and officials that all you're doing isn't enough. That it would be wiser to try to exact change from a more conventional manner. Even this current situation warrants some consideration. I'm doing what I was taught by my mother and father. And you. I have to do what's right. I wonder, perhaps this extreme behavior exhibited by the criminals is only being encouraged by the Batman's presence. This started long before the Batman. Long before me. It's been here for a long time. I just needed to have my eyes open to reality. I will never ignore what's around me again. The Riddler's Interruption, Part 2. The dark halls of the Natural History Museum. The building has an extremely tall ceiling to accommodate the large displays of dinosaurs and other creatures. The only light comes from the massive skylight that lets the moonlight in. Nightwing and Batgirl silently creep toward the office of Dr. Bloodsoul. A small keypad locks the door. Bright neon question marks are painted across the door. This is the place, all right. It's locked. I had hoped you would arrive sooner, but now is not the time to focus on what could have been, but rather what will be. Are you ready to match wits with the Riddler? Riddler, where are you? My, my, you are very rude. Not at all like the Dark Knight. Mind that that temper doesn't cloud your judgment. Unfortunately, I couldn't be there to watch your exploits in person, but by the time you figure out where I am, it will be too late. The clock is ticking. Hurry, the clue has to be in the first puzzle. Where the present and past meet. We did the first two parts and we know the references to Dr. Bloodsoul. What about these numbers? They don't seem to follow any pattern. They have to. The Riddler's puzzles are never impossible. That would go, go against his MO. Then what is it? It's not the Fibonacci sequence. It's not geometric or arithmetic. Maybe it's a word puzzle. Like three has five letters, five has four, and so forth. It can't be that. It would have to terminate in repeating fours. But maybe it is a word problem. What do you mean? Look at the letters in the words. Where has five letters, the has three, present has seven, and has three. The first numbers are five, three, seven, and three. Does it work for the whole letter? I think so. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, I'm just kidding. Type the seven. next three letters. The, Six, three, five, chair, five, four, that, four. Three. Not the most graceful, but you managed. Inside, the two find a small and frail man with duct tape strapped across his face and a large amount of TNT strapped to his chest. Across the walls of the room are strings of numbers in thick neon green paint. A timer reading three minutes begins to tick away. I do hope you won't need your fingers to add. To disarm the bomb, you'll have to come up with the code. There are eight sets of numbers. Do we add them up? Maybe. You add those four sets and I'll do these four. Done. How about you? Hang on. There. Riddler. Is it 104, 87, 59, 345, 278, 24, 38, 452? Oh, I did have higher expectations. Such a shame. There doesn't seem to be any brains behind those masks. You have time for one more guess. Digits! The second clue! The answer was digits! Add up the number of digits! 
Ready. Ready. 12, 6, 8, 15, 11, 4, 13, 15. You managed to secure victory in the end. Celebrate it while you can. Thank you. I thought I was going to die. We'll call the police. Just wait here. Okay. This was too easy. You read my mind. He gave up without even trying? This has to be a distraction. Look at the solution to each of the riddles. Natural History Museum, Chairman, 345, Blood Soul, and Digits. Could they mean anything? No, there's nothing significant. Then where is he? The riddles. Present and past meet. 10, 2, 1. This is not the time to focus on what was, but what will be. He's going to 1021 Willby Street. It's where the historical renovation of the Pickney Estate is taking place. He's going to rob the heirlooms while the police are over here. We have to move! The Bat Cave, the following night. I sift through numerous documents and reports. I have placed several pieces of evidence on a large bulletin board behind me, using string to connect the pieces of information. I hope that I can find something to link it all together. Sir, you really should get some sleep. I have to monitor the trackers. Two of them have already gone offline. Does that mean the villains discovered the false ammunition? I doubt it. The trackers weren't the most durable. They were the only item I could easily add to the storeroom without being discovered. If the ammunition is jostled or exposed to extreme temperature, they'll stop working. What does that have to do with keeping a constant view of the trackers? If the trackers deactivate, I need to be able to know their last location so that I can extrapolate the general course they were taking. Have you gotten any information? Or a lead? A third of the transmitters haven't moved at all, which suggests the sites have low traffic. Apparently, 40% have already moved into the industrial district, in various warehouses, according to the city map. And what about the remaining fourth? Those trackers circle through the industrial sector and are following a route. At the moment, they're headed toward the financial district. How odd. Heavy ammunition heading into the diamond district. Exactly my sentiments. It seems too out of the ordinary. Curious, Master Bruce. If you had to venture, say, a guess, how would you suspect the ammunition is being transported? Given the weight of the ammunition, it would have to be a truck, or at the very least a large van. Which, as I was insinuating, would look incredibly conspicuous in the Diamond District. The shipments must be in a vehicle that wouldn't stand out. But the only vehicle that could support that kind of weight would be a limousine. You simply need to find one of these trackers in motion to confirm our theory. If you're right, we'll be one step closer to the Penguin. Haste is needed, Master Bruce. I stand perched on a large stone gargoyle at the edge of one of Gotham's high rooftops. From here, I can see the numerous streets lit by lights. There are several cars driving along the road. I use a pair of binoculars to get a better view. Alfred, where's the tracking device? It's moving south on Conroy Avenue. There's more than one vehicle. Can you be more specific? According to the readout, the tracker is about to cross the intersection of Conroy and Hamill. Got it. It's a black limousine. License plate Alpha Theta Iota 341. See if you can run it. Results compiling as we speak. I'm pursuing the vehicle on rooftops. Let me know the minute you know something. Ah, here we are. The vehicle is registered to a Paul N. Gwen. Address 2438 Napier. It's a false identity. How can you be so sure? It's Penguin. P. N. Gwen. It's pulling into a parking garage connected to an office building. Surely it wouldn't be that easy. You aren't going to follow the men inside. It's too dangerous. No choice. This may be the only way to find the identity of the Penguin. 
fuck sad. It's suicide. Radio silence until I say otherwise. The car stops, and several of the men get out of the vehicle. Oi, gentlemen, we need to take the surplus supplies to the basement floor. Remember, we do this like professionals. The men struggle as they lift the heavy crate out of the car and place it onto a dolly. Pushing the dolly to a large freight elevator, the men get inside and the doors close behind them. It's the Penguin's men, Alfred. They fit the description Nightwing gave. All the men are wearing tuxedos. They're moving the crates of ammunition to the basement of the building. Find out what companies operate out of this office building. Right away, sir. I rush down the stairs, heading towards the basement. There are over 20 different businesses. List them. Maybe one of them will stand out. Let's go down the list. All-in-one appliances. Daggered cosmetics. Fugit efficiency analysis. The offices of Clarence and Baker. General goods. Finer things. And James and Brooks. Nothing. Well, you might find this interesting, sir. What is it? It appears that most of the companies are owned by only four parent companies. Daggett Industries, Gothcorp, Lexcorp, and Copperbolt Investments. Perhaps more interesting is the fact that the largest portion of businesses are owned by Copperbolt Investments. You think Oswald is behind this? Well, I certainly think it's worth remembering the old adage. But once the impossible is removed, whatever remains must be the solution. I'm almost in the basement now. Activating the video and audio feed in the cowl. Prepare to collect the information. Ready, sir. Oi! Who are you? I'm inside. Boys, be careful with the merchandise. Got it. Do be careful. I would hate to have to reacquire these goods through other means. So, what are you doing here? Nothing to worry about, gentlemen. I was just observing the shipment. Did your men follow my instructions about packing? We did exactly what we said to do. Very good, gentlemen. And unless I miss my guess, I do believe that our honored guest has arrived exactly as planned. Batman! All this hiding around in corners and shadows is really unwarranted. Do come down from the catwalk and join the rest of us. You were the penguin all along. You knew almost no one would suspect you, given your background. I can't fathom why you would sink so low, but it doesn't really matter. You've got blood on your hands. You've started a gang war, and innocents have been killed. I won't let it continue. How very imaginative of you, my dear Batman. I really have to congratulate you on working out so many of the points in our story. Unfortunate for you. It's just that. A story. What do you mean? These crates are filled with illegal weapons and ammunition. You've hired guns to protect it, and I've tracked it from one of the burnt buildings you're used to distribute the weapons. I've got you dead to rights. Oh, Batman. The stories about you are true. So quick to jump to conclusions. Gentlemen, would you care to open up all the crates for our guest? Cobblepot's men rip open the crate. Now, my nocturnal friend, would you care to gander at what items are filling my deplorable crates? Pens! Crackers! Paper! Oh, 
one of your famous gadgets. Such a strange contraption. Oh, would you like it back, my dear boy? But so delicate. Tempa, Tempa. There's no need to get angry. We all make mistakes. It's how we learn from them that's important. It doesn't matter. I have a video feed of your men with the weapons. At the very least, you'll be arrested for employing dangerous men. You think so, do you? <laughs> Gentlemen, would you kindly reveal to our friend your dangerous weapons? You know, I do suppose an umbrella could be used to give someone a nasty bump on the head. They are, however, quite legal. <laughs> it is a small peculiarity of mine, but I do like my employees dressed for success and ready for any turn of weather. You won't get away with this. I'm afraid there isn't anything to get away with. I will, however, have a great deal of material for the news program tomorrow. You really are making it quite easy for me, my malicious malcontent marauder. You don't have anything! Oh, but I do. You see, this room has a closed circuit surveillance system. Everything you've done has been recorded in glorious black and white video. <laughs> New technology for the new times. By this time tomorrow, the city of Gotham will have proof of your disreputable behavior. Accosting and assaulting one of my employees, accusing a legitimate businessman of being a criminal mastermind, and let's not forget the trespassing. My, my, my. However will you escape from this? Using a small smoke bomb, I smash it into the ground, releasing a plume of gas. <coughs> Politrix! Who do you know, Gold? No at all. Well, I suppose the Batman has more than one trick in his utility belt. Gentlemen! You may proceed to unloading the supplies. The Batcave. How did he do it? How did he know I was onto him? How am I gonna stop him? Master Bruce, adversity reaches us all at some point. Victory is easy. Everyone knows what to do in success. It's failure that is much harder to swallow. Learning how to deal with one's shortcomings is the true demonstration of a man. He's turned the whole city against me. He must have started it all when Vale was attacked. She works for him. He had the perfect means to get what he wanted. He's got the whole city in his back pocket, both legitimately and illegally. He's won. Well, that's rot, sir. I watched you face greater difficulties, and I refuse to let you commit further self-degradation. You'll find a way. Of that, I have no doubt. Ever since you were a little boy, you've always found a way. How can I stop him when the Batman's considered a criminal? Perhaps you should learn from Cobblepot's example. If your alter ego cannot achieve the goal, then it may be time to take advantage of the good that Bruce Wayne can do. You're right. Now don't look so distraught. We've weathered worse before. Thank you. <laughs>